Well, hello. Here we are today with David. Hi, David. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. Good to have you with us. Uh, David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, um, yeah, I am. Uh, my name is David. I um, came from a, a family that was very invested in um, uh, scripture, uh, Bible literature. My dad was a pastor. Um, my parents met at seminary, so both of them took Greek and Hebrew um, years and years ago. Uh, my mom was very happy to get rid of the languages as soon as she could, but my dad um, <laughs> a lot of seminary students to... love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he uh, he decided he wanted to stick with Hebrew, so he's he's kept at it over the years, and that kind of set an example for me. I always had this this kind of goal that I wanted to uh, go to seminary, uh, not to be a pastor, but mostly to learn the languages so that I could read, uh, you know, Hebrew Bible and New Testament and Hebrew and Greek respectively. And so that's what uh, I finally had the opportunity to do that. And that's what I, I did. And um, yeah, so I, I love I love uh, scripture. I love uh, reading. And now I love Greek. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, what was your experience with Greek before coming to Seamus University? Yeah, so I'm a student at Gordon-Conwell um, and, and uh, take classes online. So I work full time and I'm a, a part time student. Uh, which has its own set of challenges. But I, I went through the Greek uh, program there, and I'm currently uh, still involved as, as a teaching assistant uh, with the Greek program. And uh, so I really enjoyed that, but um, it, it's a very traditional seminary grammar translation type of approach to the language. Uh, and as I started getting deeper, I wanted to broaden my, um, kind of, you know, broaden the the background that I had and and go at stuff from a little bit of a different angle and, and see if I could find other strategies to accelerate my growth. Yes. This is, I mean, this is often the case with different students who come through who have prior Greek. They're often after a different angle or a different experience or a different way of uh, engaging the language. Uh, for you, what was the thing that tipped you over the line? When did you, when did you first hear about Seamus U? Yeah. So I, at, at some point a few years ago, I, I started, um, you know, I had a, a few friends who were on, on Twitter and followed all sorts of, you know, um, you know, New Testament, Old Testament, uh, you know, researchers. And uh, through them, I saw different people starting to quote and ret uh, retweet, um, which I'm sad that re retweet is no longer the correct verb for that. <laughs> yeah. um, but they would they would reference uh, Michael and Rachel Aubrey and the coin dash dash Greek dot com website. And. Uh, so I found that, and that was just a treasure trove of information. And then uh, you constantly were interacting with them on Twitter and going back and forth. And um, then I was like, "So who is this? Who is this Seamus guy?" And I, so I, I went to your profile. I started following you. I started, you know, reading what you were putting out there, um, and then started reading your blog uh, pretty regularly. And um, that was kind of the the first time that I encountered this. Oh, there's a different way to learn this language. Um, you know, you can do it uh, not through a grammar translation method, but through, uh, you know, learning to speak and hear and, you know, developing the language the same way that you would develop, uh, you know, a modern language, Spanish or German or French or something like that. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I, I'm not sure when I first encountered the Aubrey's, uh, Michael and um, Rachel, uh, but I've learned so much from them in terms of linguistics uh, over mm. the years and specifically Koine or New Testament Greek. Uh, it's been yeah, it's been really beneficial for my understanding of that side of things. Uh, yes. And so you've come, you've come, you come to Seamus U, you've done six six terms now. You've gone through 101 to 106. Uh, you yes. survived. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is an attrition rate, but it's I mean it's really it's not a I wouldn't say it's a high attrition rate. It's it's usually life that gets in the way of people, not really Greek. Uh, but... Yeah, it's uh, the, the the people that that were in the same you know track as me who dropped. Um, you know, I, I happened to run into one of them at, at SBL last year. Um, you know, several several Seamus students. We all got lunch together, dinner together, um, and we all met at a, 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 you know sessions that were be, being presented by Mike and Rachel. So it was you know like all worlds colliding, which is a lot of fun. Um, but you know they they only couldn't continue because of life stuff. Um, but every everyone seemed to really enjoy the whole track and wanted to continue, and uh, a, a bunch of us did. So which I'm I'm grateful for because we had a we had a different feel by the time we got to 106 compared to 101. <laughs> yes, so. yes. I should I should send 106 students uh, a revisit of one of their 101 classes so they can look back on the, the past. 
Um, I've, I've been... done that. Oh, well, yeah. good, good. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, what's been the outcome for you in terms of your Greek ability and experience? Yeah, not just the word. Oh, uh, well, a few different things come to mind. Number one, um, having somebody that you can look at that, that, that models, um, you know, how to approach a language and uh, has the intuition to say, sweat these details, don't sweat these details is really key. Having somebody who can try to explain that to you in Greek and you try to understand, you know, this is what's important and this is what's not important in Greek is is, is really helpful. Somebody like me who... Um, Part of why I want to learn Greek well and why I want to be able to speak Greek is to be able to propagate these this types of methodology. Um, it's helpful for me to, to see how you teach a course. I've learned, um, you know, from watching you, there are certain things that are really good in terms of engaging students and, you know, where can you go? Where do you, you know, kind of run aground? Where, where where, where students kind of get tripped up, um, you know, more, much more the former than the latter, because you've, you've been doing this for a while now. Um, so it's, it's pretty smooth for our classes. And I've, I've run around. I mean, I'm still finding places times. where people run aground. I run aground <laughs> and say, oh, gee, that was, no, no. <laughs> need to work on that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that'll always happen. But, yes, uh, yes. but overall, uh, my own experiment, experience trying to do this in, in little bits and doses along the way has been a lot rockier than the way you make it seem. But um, so, all of that, but then one of the things that that I think you particularly bring to the table that that not very many people do is, you come from it having first gone through grammar translation, which means that you understand how my mind is working at the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and you can push back a little bit harder on some of my tendencies bringing in from you know kind of older style methodologies, um, but you you also come very deeply grounded in a grammatical understanding of this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I find more and more as, as I, you know, have worked with you and then other people like you is, is pretty typical for people who learn to speak is that their grammar understanding is, is really deep. Mm -hmm. It is, it is not something that you only can learn through a grammar translation method. It's, you really, um, pick it up very deep at a very deep level and much more intuitively. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of your discussions of linguistics, you know, informed by the Aubrey's and other people are at a, a really high level. And I've gone back to your materials repeatedly to try to understand for myself some of the finer, you know, points of, you know, aspect or middle voice or, um, you know, stuff stuff along those lines. Uh, you know, why are what why is you know why why do so many futures have middle voice? You know, that's that's one of the you know common questions that that we get. So yes. all I'm of that. that it, one. The, I'm saving that one for the gates of glory. <laughs> Deal. Yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I was uh, sorry I meant to cut you off. Um, in terms of so, if someone else was coming, they're getting ready, they're thinking about it, enrolling in a class, they want to know what to expect or some tips, how to survive. <laughs> What's your advice for an incoming student? Oh, um, I mean, my advice would probably be to um, just just and enjoy the process as, as an organic process, um, you know, with the confidence that um, you're not going to leave someone behind, um, you know, as, as long as they're engaged. And, you know, if, if you don't have any background Greek, you'll have to put in some hours outside of class uh, to get the repetition that's needed. Um, but I could, I knew that I could always come to class with, with any questions. Um, I mean, I, I even remarked um, having gone through, you know, five semesters of Greek when, when I started with you, um, that attendance, you know, just seemed so fast at the beginning. Um, there's so much that you have to onboard, even with somebody like me who had a, who had a background. Yeah. Um, but all of that was, was really, was really well done. It was really smooth. Um, you know, a lot of the so so yeah, what what to what for a new student to expect? I mean, or what how like what mindset should they come in at? Just come in with the mindset that this is a language that you're you're going to try to communicate, um, and you're going to try to not sit there and parse. You're not going to diagram sentences. You're going to try to read it and read it frequently enough to where you have, um, you know, the intuition to where it, it kind of jumps off the page at you, and you don't have to dive in. It comes to you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks very much for this uh, chat. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, my pleasure.